Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, another wondrous propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dana. One versus one on Simrosky again. Yes, indeed. I've been touring through a lot of the replays I've been receiving lately, and this one was rather the best one. I actually had to pick it up at game replays at all. A lot of two versus twos, and a lot, you know, with either sniper spam or something less exciting. So. My first one here on Tomoski is going to be a bit of an exciting one, a bit of a tense one. We'll be watching here Moonchild for the 3rd Panzer Grenadier Division with Lightning War, Assault Support and Jäger Armor. Opposing him shall be Cam Frenchy with Counter Attack, Guard Rifle and Shock Motor Heavy Tactics. So there's a bit of you different things going on here. But back to Moonchild. Moonchild. Who's going straight up here for the Infantry Company. Grenadier is following up pretty quickly. Pioneers Pioneer heading down the right side. Grenadiers might hit Grenadiers west. Ready. It's a bit of a spread out approach here from Moonchild. More conscripts likely arriving here for Cam Frenchy, who's rushing ahead pretty sa aggressively south. Might be he's trying to wire off this spot. This is in fact ignoring the few point. Yes, there we go. Not unusual to see this for some on Samoski since this has also happened a lot on Samoa. So no. Vast surprises there for anyone, I fear. And a pretty standard move. More infantry here on the way Enemy for Moonchild. Conscripts rolling up, and there we go, this spot is almost wired off entirely. And there we go. Look, Yuri, I did it without cutting my own hands! Yes, you're a big boy now, buddies, now shut up! It's a bit more spread out approach. Looks like he's alternating over the fuel there. Fuel there. And it is slowly approaching. Rather slow approach from Moonchild overall, interestingly enough. And looks like Moonchild here is all realizing or just predicting what's going to happen here. Instead, moving up the right hand side. Conscripts here getting engaged by the Grenadiers inside the house. Nice full broadside here. The Conscripts won't have much of a chance against this German infantry. Yeah, and there we go. Looks like the pioneers quickly scale the wall. Yeah, this is no great obstacle for us, the pioneers. So here on the western front, they're too fat. They can't do it. Nah. <laughs> Anyways, Grenadiers marching up here, getting out of his comfort zone yeah, into some more heavy cover. The Grenadiers should ready. probably move up and support. <laughs> Third squad and apparently a fourth squad on the way as well. Looks like German heavy infantry approach is getting a bit more popular now. Interesting, interesting. And looks like there we go, popping into the house, find some more all around protection and cover. Third squad are going to be moving up. Looks like Germany is focusing most of the infantry up here, but so far not gaining much territory. The Soviet player doing his best to keep things out. And there we go, Molotov straight into the house, actually lobbing right in front, though, hoping to catch the troops as they run out of the house. Deviously played right there by Cam Frenchy. Meanwhile, this spot of territory is getting secured by Germany. On the other hand, it's not connected to Germany. Conscripts continue to take a bit of a beating here. Losses rising up. One poor bastard catching on fire. Be unfortunate there. And there we go. Ooh, running away suspiciously enough. Ooh, ooh, rah. I am enthusiastically attacking the enemy away from him. I am not the deserter! And there we go, a fourth squad of grenadiers moving up there. Quite a bit of heavy infantry focus here, and looks like a light machine gun is on the way for these gentlemen. More Molotovs. And there we go. Finally, Cam Frenchy is forced to leave behind a lot of dead bodies, a Russian and German, and pulled back from the west. And apparently, our oh, brave friend here actually managed to secure the point up there for the time being. Going up here for the cutoff point, very bold with the pioneers. The nice to see that. Definitely interesting. Grenadiers. These gentlemen will need a bit of reinforcement. And looks we like the light machine action. gunners are moving in to support the centre. The, the light machine and Gavel. Though generally the MG42 was more of a general purpose machine gun that could function both as a light machine gun but also as a heavy one with when mounted on a tripod. So a little fun fact there. 
And there we go. Covering this point here with the light machine gun. Crime script's taking a bit of a shooting. Slightly pulling back. Actually running a bit close. That could be dangerous. And there we go. One fourth blast that saw through. Another one. And there we go, the obvious Molotov. These kind of these could move up here and take some points. Or they could try to try and set up a machine gun bunker right here. That would be an interesting move, though not necessarily something I would demand or even recommend strongly. Running into a burning house. So it seems like the flames are dying out. Conscripts are remaining outside. They're taking quite a shooting there and forcefully take in the face of German firepower. And looks like we're seeing a rather heavy tier one here from Moonchild getting an MD42. The Yolders he has teched up, getting the few point over there. Rather nicely played for this pioneer. I mean, he's been able to take a lot and harass a lot with them. And he's yet to engage them in combat. That's pretty interesting play there with Moonchild. Conscripts continue to run close up to the house with the light machine gunners in. They also continue to Molotov it. And Moonchild continues to rather nicely dodge it. Conscripts will realize they don't like bullets and retreat. Come Frenchy, he having a problem. He's constantly, well, sending them in piecemeal. He should try and focus up for a more proper assault right here. He's basically just feeding the German plane, particularly he's feeding the light machine gun squaw, which is not really helping him an awful lot. Though I'm sure it's doing a lot for Moonchild. Molotov, but oh dear. Will he escape? And looks like he did it. Looks like he did it, Comrades. What do you need? Enemy forces are securing our territory. An MG42 team is And a second MG42. This is a very heavy tier one from Moonchild. Four squads of Grenadiers. Two MG42s. This is not something you'd see in Company of Heroes. So definitely a bit novel. We are seeing the like to make a nice company going up here for Moonchild. We are ready. And conscripts running around being a bit of a pain in the arse here to the Germans. The Germans trying to extend the favour to the Russians in return. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. Going for the cutoff point here. But running into that MG42 probably hadn't expected a second heavy machine gun. I don't even think he's run into the first one. And there you go. Cut off point. Cut off. Quickly getting into the house here to cover this area. Nicely done there. Which is going to be an MD42. It's going to be rather limited what he can do. A mine here from the combat engineers might be a clever idea there for Cam Frenchy. Scout car out. Like to punch a speed wagon. I'm having the third pants going to division. Auto cannon going up. Going to increase his firepower. Perhaps also against you new know, Soviet vehicles. There we go, just lots and lots of bullets raking the poor wooden house. Constantly doing what they can to overwhelm the grenadiers. MG squad moving up to support. And there we go, the auto cannon is to the right. Pioneers moving up, scout for coming back, worried there might be anti tank ready to get locked at it. Not a deeply surprising worry. And of course, if that were the case, they could lob it over right here, so. You do much for notice that we're seeing Molotovs up here on the Pioneers. And one country squad picked, peaked its head a bit too far ahead and quickly suffered death. Five grenades here, it looks like they've been locked at the con the engineers holding up things there by the southern fuel point. And there we go, lots more Molotovs. Scout card doing what he can. And Grenadiers with the light machine gun to kill him up there. Now followed up by Panzer Grenadiere for Moonchild. Bold attempt at basically just pushing his infantry advantage rather than enough. And there we go. Hit the dirt, meaning he's gone for guards. Rifle combined arms. MD42 now in the church. Scout Cup puts it back one force there. These gentlemen out in the open though, if the MD42 turns about now, it could be very painful. On the other hand, they might light the church on fire. A bit of iconoclasm going on here from the conscripts. Lighting the church on fire. And these conscripts caught outside down to two men. Low health. 
That could prove to be very painful. Same for these gentlemen up there. Ooh, MG42 setting up there. Ooh, pointing in the wrong direction. Never mind then, never mind. And time to pop over here to Cam Frenchy. Who has already chosen a doctrine as we noted. Who's got himself a mortar now, the 82mm. He could also get a maximum, he could also get a field gun to perhaps deal with this scout car. This infernal light vehicle. And looks like the combat unit is all died inside this house. He does become a tomb. Alternating anti-tank grenades are up now. And there we go, veterans run for the Sonderkraft Fahrzeug. The Leipzig Panzer Spielwagen. Slow advance up here. Whatever shall he go for next? This Cam Frenchy. Besides perhaps some submachine guns galore. First conscripts. You need something built? Mortar crew ready. A bit of quiet here. For the time being, bunker up like going to be a medic bunker, not a bad idea. Hands are gonna do this with an MG42 bagging them up here on the far west. And the scout can continue to out trying to sort of deal some damage here to come Frenchy's forces, spotting weak spots and murdering them. I'm getting the impression he might try and go for some guards inventory or something, because he's flooding with a manpower right now. And there we go, more rounds falling down. Finally, Moon Charge is aware, and there we go. We do see the Guardian Infantry arriving. Locking their mighty PTRS. 40. Oh, direct hit there from the mortar. Complete loss of entire German Infantry squad. Mine went off, looks like. Oh no, just two squads in a row wiped out. How unfortunate right there for Moonchild. There we go, Molotovs lighting the house here on fire, <laughs> forcing them out in the open and forcing them to retreat. But there we have it, losses. Looks like a mortar round was very close there, doing some serious damage still. Managed to kill one poor bastard. Things are definitely getting a bit unpleasant now for Moonchild. Once it was looking good, now it's looking a lot dead. Though he's still got a solid force, he's a bit lacking now. Two Grenadier squads lost in that quick succession, even with two already there. Besides them, and the Panzers will still hurt. But at the same time, he's still got an infantry force large enough to actually be a bit of a problem here for Cam Frenchy. Guards advancing. And there we go, advancing up here through the central road. Enemy forces are capturing our supplies. Hitting the dirt, MG42 pulling back, having been outmaneuvered by Camp Frenchy's Soviet infantry. Go, oh, I didn't actually mention what units they're fighting for third panther gun is. Yes, the Soviets, no. Much. Hang on then, then you'll see they are the fifth guards tank corps. My apologies. Sometimes it slips. A conscript there, pinned down, raked by MG42 fire. Here. By the way, the PTR S40 was not the only anti tank rifle, they had the PTR D, I believe it was called, which is actually a more powerful anti tank rifle, but the PTR S was the semi automatic variant and could thus fire a bit faster. And there you go, Panzer Kampfangfeer rolling out, probably sent in from another nearby Panzer Division, or Panzer Gunner Division, probably the Force Deutschland. And the Garten held up here are becoming the target of the Panzerfall Gunner. It's like I was going to move in with a rifle grenade. Fire on these Gunners. And there we go, rifle grenade. Supply sector under attack. Sir so player definitely under pressure. There we go, some machine guns up. Field gun on the way as well for Cam Frenchy. Gunners suffering quite handsomely. Attacking. 
And a Malta for Moonchild in return as well. Interesting, interesting. Scout Cup North being repaired here by some pioneers. Make it quick. Anti-tank gun is ready for action. And there we go, field gun out. Your orders, what do you need? Ooh, can't get forward here by the Gandhis, quickly rushing in, like machine gun firing up, and followed up with a Panzer ball and a scout car. Very close encounter right there for those conscripts. Very close. The enemy is encroaching on our territory. But come French, you continue to be under some serious German pressure, barely any territory connected at all. Not really looking good at all. Not a lot of fuel flowing in, not a lot of munitions, or anything. There's definitely some problems there going on for Count Frenchy. Question is, how will he be able to work his way out of them if possible? Oh, heavy machine gun here makes a bit of a mistake. Advance a bit too close. Here comes under fire from the guard from the conscripts at the same time that could have stand to move. And oh, quick move there. Meaning a Stuka strafing run by the looks of it, but of course also means assault support is up. Conscripts got in the pin, though they did clear out the MG42. Meaning they can't get it because they're constantly straight. To damn well close there. German mechanized militarized movement for the Let north. Still no move towards connecting this point. These communists could quickly move up here. They could also consider mining this area a bit as well. And the conscripts might once continue away from there. They're constantly getting mortared anyways. And shot at by that Stuka. Waiting for your command! Mortar rounds back! Quite a bit of resources here being flooded by Camp Frenchy. I would suggest you get something with it. You need something built? Look, oh I don't know. Build some buildings, get some tanks or tank destroyers. He would definitely benefit from it and there you go. One infantry unit lost for poor Camfrenchi. They did not stand a chance. It would seem. Engineer standing by. Probably the poor the bastards who got massacred up north. A tank with the tank command, by the way, at this stage would probably be a good idea. Then you could also get the anti aircraft half tank and thus get some protection maybe from the Stuka strafing runs. Head in dirt, him a desperate attempt to protect. Going to be only a limited success as well. Seeing Grenadiers and Panzers moving in with grenades and other fun things. Building collapsed under German mortar fire, and we're seeing here that Camp French is being pushed very seriously back here. Very nasty effort. Maxim and another field gun on the way. Looks like Camp French is getting ready for a very serious counterattack, which is going to be needed. Sector has been cut off. Though of course at the same time you could just try and push North here with a large force and then try to draw Moonchild into it. Most specifically the two field guns we soon have. It looks like he doesn't want to do that. Instead another assault right here where Moonchild will already be prepared and there we go. The response is quickly the Luftwaffe intervenes. And poor Fedorov gets gunned down. Troops have been lost. Right. More mortar fire. But there we go, the advance is nonetheless made. The despite the Stuka rolling above. Combat is on the way. Combat engineers are standing by. Okay, that's but very little point. territory left. Victory points all being secured the here by Deutschland. And the third Panzer Grenadiers. Nasty hit there. Maxim setting up position in the house. Going to open up Maxim. Now MG Rack taking a bit of a shooting there from something. And when will Count Frenchy move the rest of his force? Fugan here being pulled back by the way due to nasty intervention here from the German water. Rather unpleasant that. 
Things are definitely not looking good for Camp Benji the fifth guard tank core. Over to Moonchild. Who could easily now go for an officer or an open blitz to get either more resources or something a bit more out of his men. And it looks like one larger assault is going to make up for some movement there. Tango the tank command going up, field gun ready as well. Maxim finally forced to vacate the premises. German attention proving a bit too much when they decide to probe with machine guns and mortars. Looks like it might even be a distraction here for Come French is starting forced to make a move then the north. Mortar push away, but veterans in two though. Wonderful. In fact, looks like oh what a red hit on the mortar and the MD crew of Moochild. Sneaky that and he might have actually made a direct strike with it, which is actually quite effective. You can actually know where it is. The enemy that is. And we're seeing here a quick response from Moonchild Scout Kind Panzer 4 reacts with a righteous fervor and looks like very strongly that Moonchild is making a play for the Tiger Tank. And he's got plenty of fuel and he's got plenty of manpower. He's just getting very close, bringing out some manpower for it and also having the command points. So, as to make an educated guess, I would say he's definitely playing for Tiger. Also not a wild surprise considering how little fuel he's actually spent, he's only got one tank and one scout car. So in that sense, there should be some indicator for Mr. Come Frenchy, what's going to be coming his way since he knows he's not seen a lot of fuel, it's been the thing, he's also knows what stock his opponent's gone. Now that he's seen the straight and thus knows there's likely going to be a tiger on the way, or at least that would be a good thing to surmise. Now go hit in the dirt for protection here. But apparently hitting the dirt that provides no protection from so Luftwaffe. Well, I suppose for the Luftwaffe pilot it might already look like they're hitting the dirt anyway, so that's what it <laughs> Can't skip up here. Oh, Swift Kunks assault here for the Panzer and the Scout car. Unleashing death upon the conscripts, unleashing machine guns and other nasty things point blank, tearing through them. And there we go, Tiger available. Kunks pouring in of troops, but they're getting gunned down a bit as well, but not as much as the sodium. Two Kunks is probably close to death, close to death. Get out of there, Yuri! And dead. At the same time, a second assault launched in. He might have even just decided to go, what? To help with this and use it as a distraction while he then launches another assault up here. Supported by a half tank, but at the same time, his northern move here has actually lost him a lot of things two squads of infantry and a field gun. That's not exactly good, in particular, not if Moonchild decides to grab that field gun for himself. It's enough, he did not call in the Tiger tank. I'm quite surprised at that. I would have figured he'd done it. Instead, he now ends up calling in an awful blitz, so. Why is he waiting for the Tiger if he all of a sudden just decides to spend up a lot of resource? It makes no sense right there for Moonchild. I can't help but feel that's a bit too weird. For my blood. Troops will be needed, using the mortar to grab territory. Rather indicates though how desperate Camp French is and of course if Moonchild notices that he should be aware of this. I mean you usually don't see veteran mortar or anything like that in terms of support it's being used to grab points unless your opponent is rather desperate of course in a sense you can also use this to deceive your opponent if you're feeling a bit bold by using this and that's perhaps you know it makes them connection here if you're desperate that's also making them likely to make mistakes simply then things can get a bit bold but a fragmentation bombing run oh got him him as that was close the only casualties here being a few gravestones Oh, and fed a lot. T-34 now rolling ahead, looks like Camp has got himself some tanks. Tankies ahead. Oh, and the are getting crushed. Oh, they managed the Panzer Faust, but they also managed to get caught. Sometimes you have to be a bit careful, you know, with timing your Panzer Faust. And usually when the T-34 is right in front of you, ready to drive you down, it's not the time to go. You know, Heinz, this would be a great time for a Panzer Fast. Fire! The enemy is attempting but having secured both sector. victory points, I mean, just note he's down to 67. I mean, Camp is clearly in many ways desperate. He has to play rather cautiously. 
Also noting here we actually seen Count Frenchy being forced as guard squad with conscripts. He's merging. I mean, this is anything rather than shows how dire the situation is for Count Frenchy. He knows he wants more of his guard squad, but he also knows he can't afford to be forced, so he merges. Good lord, this is getting really interesting. Also a bit, you know, more than the usual bog standard player to see from some Soviet player, so that's Grant. He's probably waiting for some munitions to get the quad mount on this thing. We'll be seeing the Tiger now. Come Standing by. Why aren't you going for it? You're rather confusing me, Moonchild. I suppose that might be why you're the moon child and not the earth child. Our opponents are seizing a sector. It's done. Also looks like there's any the actual guards from the left of this guards rifle infantry squad. They're interesting to note there's no light machine guns by the looks of it. I think you should consider getting that as well. Conscripts are getting overwhelmed so much. Heavy fire pump being wielded by these panthers from their storm gewehrs. Conscripts forced to run. Mortar rounds falling down though, pretty swiftly in response. Enemy infantry is engaging us. We need orders! Scott here holding a bit of a stand. Conscripts are using anti tank grenades. And there we go. Does do a lot of damage. And oh no, oh no, no. Oh dear. Looks like he might use these Panzer Grenadiers. And there we go. Wiped up by the T-34's machine gun. Rather unfortunate that. We are losing the sector. Ready for orders. More Panzer Grenadier on the way. Looks like he's quick to replace his losses. Over Blitz having a nice time down here. Far removed from the front line. Ready! Oh, another, another fragmentation bombing run this time by looks like for the house. Oh, good night. No survivors. Oh, nice hit there on the mortar crew. Of course, getting run off themselves by the T-34. Our territory. More T-34s are arriving here for Camp Frenchy. Lots of troops hanging about. Still continuing to merge with his guards, the riflemen. Oh, no, he actually reinforced this time around. I still think you should get some light machine guns up for them to increase the firepower further. That would definitely benefit them greatly. Now, of course, I mean, still they get the better guards' rifle. They just the conscripts here. They'll still be able to do more damage than regular. Still, light machine gun would be the best. T-34 on the road here against the Malaysian North, to a bit of harassment. German Panzer IV falling in. Still no Tiger tank. I mean, he keeps floating this man, but he keeps Our hanging about that point and finally gets territory. it. But really, I'm having a hard time divining the logic behind particularly that move. Oh well, Tiger has arrived. The Tiger is here. Courtesy of the core strikes, in this case, one of the few divisions to actually have their own Tiger tank company. That was incredibly rare, and even the SS division had it only had it for a brief period of time. Otherwise, they were formed into independent SS Tiger battalions. So there we go, Tiger rolling ahead. And to four, Scout coming in from the other side. Looks like we're going to see an all-around assault. Well played there by Moonchild, going to get the most out of his armor. Tiger taking a direct hit. Field getting blasted. Scout car joining as well. Not looking good here for Camp Flenchy. His men are getting massacred. There we go. Barely any damage done. We're good. Due to the larger or minor pincer maneuver launch here, so we actually will attack from different angles. So that's making it harder for him to be stopped. And of course, got some good hits on the field and through behind the shield. G-34 attacking from another angle entirely. Enemy taken on edge. They have big balls or tiny brains or both. Heavy pants are out of the way. Yes. 
Germans been hanging around here, being stopped by the great opponent, Barbed Wire. Ah, scheiße. But, time for the mid game analysis. Current situation for Moon Charlie. He's definitely got a nice chunk of infantry. He's also definitely got the armor advantage. I mean, he's got the Panzer IV. He's got a Tiger tank. I suppose he's also got the Scout Cutter. That's not really armor, it's just an armored vehicle. But still, got the infantry. He's got Veteran to 3 Grenadiers for the lighter machine and Gewehr, which is definitely going to be quite the headache for Kampf Frenzy to overcome. On the other hand, he's a bit lacking in territory at the moment. He's going to have to do one attacking, and that's where Mr. Kamflenchy might have a chance with if he well prepares some field guns, he could draw in Moonchild into some very nasty kill zones. Of course, one opportunity here for Moonchild, though, is open. That's actually basically just pushing up from here, ignoring the center for the time being, attacking where he's weak, which is actually the right flank. There's barely anything holding here. Kamflenchy has been rather lacking in minds, and that could quickly turn things around, particularly if you also launch an assault here. Basically, avoid the center, go for the flanks, envelop entirely that way. That would probably prove to be quite an effective measure. So that is something to keep in mind, I would argue. But there's definitely some things there. He should be careful not to suffer too much, and he should be careful about trying to, you know, launch direct assaults into field guns because that could very well be his end, his demise. But looking at Camp French, he's only adding a bit more in terms of units, though he's also lacking in field guns. He's definitely suffered a bit there, had them wrecked. Not necessarily well placed. He definitely is going to need a lot more field guns to support his T-34s. In particular against the Tiger, he will need a guard infantry. Should get some light machine guns up so they can begin buttoning up as well. Which could prove to be quite the useful combination here in the fight against Moonchild. Otherwise, mine this area. Get something to protect it. Perhaps a maximum up here to at least make it harder for the Germans to rush in and take that point. Because he needs to be incredibly careful around his victory points, which as we know are very, very low for Camp Frenchy. That's something that very much needs to be looked into and kept in mind. Of course you could also perhaps roll in here within the tank and wipe out these kind of ideas for the machine gun and take back this point. So that's a thing few things to consider there. He could also definitely consider getting up something like that Howard to begin bombarding the fascist positions that would definitely re reward him with some things or you know get the Sturmweg out. But let's return to the fight. Our unit count is increasing. Good one. Ooh, looks like he's going to make a move. Oh, never mind, never mind. Moonchild quick to call in some air support to cover his tiger tank. And there we go, we're actually seeing the anti air package now going up. Go seeing the tiger tank move down there. Oh, he will break the bar wire with the tank. Which is damaged, then pull it back. Cheeky, cheeky, but well played. Yes, comrade. Mortar yes, standing strong. Our territory is falling into enemy hands. And there we go. Path is open for the infantry. Maxim doing what he can, but it is pinned, thus meaning actually does very much very little damage despite firing. And there we go, anti-aircraft half check opened up. And this actually moves in right in front of it, that's pretty ballsy. But so far they seem to be surviving some of it. But there we go, T-34 joins in as well. Mortar crew pushing away. Another T-34 rolling in. We need to re-establish our supply lines. And looks like some garden just suffered a quite a penalty in the face of his armored car and the tiger tank. But there we go, things are going a bit on the back foot for Moonchild. Again, he is actually making a push for the right hand side. And this MD 42 was left rather out on its own a bit. Curiously, but there we go, putting it back. Max, I'm going to need some coolant. Rifleman ready. And there definitely should be some resources for another T-34 here for Come Frenchy. Or a Howard if he so fancies. Either would work nicely. You need light anti-tank support? Standing by. Enemy forces are attempting to Quite capture our about there. And going for that victory point, there will need to be a swift response from Come Frenchy to protect this because again, he's got few victory points left. 
And oh dear, TP Voice spotted by the Panzer IV, not looking good. Bit of a nice surprise if the tank is. Almost wiped out. A last heroic ramming attempt. And there we go. Gets the main gun and the engine. At least he managed to get something out of this otherwise poor engagement, which should give the other T-34 a chance to move in and finish it off. And we're seeing none of the rest of Moonchild's forces currently reacting, so that could definitely prove to be all right here. Grenadier's being blasted by the T-34. Field gun moving in, he should definitely get Oh, two T-34s more on the way. More armor, more tanks. Go on, lads. And crushing a few pioneers. Lovely. Maximum crew, good job there using these half tech to quickly get things going there. Panzer Faust and the Chief of the Cobra doesn't do much. Then he's advancing, command of maximum fire, coming on anti aircraft after Kaya, Panzer 4 down, looks like the field gun joined in here a bit. Kennedy's going to be a trouble here versus the T 34. Panzer's moving in. MD 42 in the church. And of course, we've got the veterans of King Mortar firing from nearby as well. Things are definitely getting a bit chaotic here. A quick grenade through the side of the house could solve things for the right hand victory point. And Panther is making a direct assault here, getting shredded point blank. That was definitely not so well handled right there by Moonchild. Tiger rolls in, nothing to stop the field guns been pulled away, needs to pull back again. Tiger not pushing too far ahead. Clearly, Moonchild is not interested in wasting it on anything silly. We have a new T-34 standing by. We've been targeting. Anti-tank grenade failed to penetrate the frontal armor. No surprises there. T-34 reporting. Awaiting command. T-34 forced to pull back. More troops, more reinforcements. Confenti barely holding on. But still, he is holding on. He's actually holding back the Germans quite nicely. Even the Tiger. Semichtiger Tiger. A nice combination of field guns. Of course, the half ticket showing things can be reinforced at the front line as well. It looks like he was forced to pull it back a bit there. Using overdrive, by the way, to quickly lead to an escape. Ready. Still no sign of an officer for Moonchild, and I'm a bit disappointed over that. Our territory is falling into enemy hands. There we go, making a move for that central victory point, that vital, vital central victory point. Ready looks like order. we might be seeing a mortar strike. Looks like. Did he use the precision strike? <laughs> looks like it. Oh, he went for the precision strike. Oh. Nasty. Didn't work though. He did move before it happened. But could have been devastating. And another rifle grenade. Keep it close. Advancing. Few going to quickly move up. And oh, fragmentation bombing run. Dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Almost getting the motor crew. T-34 down. Mi Maxim crew almost wiped out as well. And down to 53 victory points. Germans getting ready here. ME-42 covering the advance made by the Panzers, but they're going to get a very nasty surprise. Oh no, the T-34 is moving away. Oh, never mind then, never mind. We're going to send him up a bit closer. But there we go. T-34 was not far enough away and is quick to rush in. And thus, Moonchild's sudden advance ran into a lot of problems. We're actually seeing the Tigers pulling back. The Tiger is pulling back. All the things to happen. Ruben has even pulled up up in response. Seeing more T-34s or so perhaps another Machine field gun, gun from Kamfrenchi either would probably be a good idea. Command's going up, the T-34 advancing up south. Oh, he might go for the Opel Blitz. Mines, all set. 
What a clever little fiend! That come Frenchy, yes. Orbital Blitz not having a fun time all of a sudden. Oh, veteran you two right as that happens. What increasing damage and German infantry climbed up right in front of the T 34. One hit could do an awful lot of damage then. And there we go. Several casualties inflicted. And it looks like the T 34 might be ready to get out of there as we see the Tiger tank trundling forwards. He's actually a second Tiger tank, he's out for Moonchild. And there we go, T-34 getting a bit of a good day surprise. And his forces are pulled back, but again, veteran do for the T-34 actually also gives it a damage reduction bonus, which does make it a bit harder for the Tiger to easily knock out. You need light anti-tank support? Do you need something? Soldiers ready. Field guns standing by. Tiger rolling ahead to the rolling back. Guards team marching up. Still no light machine guns up for those guardsmen. And looks like they no longer merge. Perhaps come Frenchies feeling the pressure less. Now our team has just been forcing. But still was fine to see actually using merge. MD4 is a bit close to the front line. Nothing to cover it. A quick fragmentation grenade could do the trick. Such one as you. Oh, more opening up as well. On grenade, and there we go. Frag grenade, and almost all dead. More field guns on the way. Tiger making bad spot, hitting a mine. And thus, Moonchild selling the salt once more ran into quite some hiccups. Meanwhile, Scout Cab Bet three and Tiger Tank unleashing pain of the German kind on uh, Count Frenchy's troops. I mean, it's great to see sort of trying to you know, make some pins and maneuvers, but he's, you know, constantly running into mines or something else, which all of a sudden forces him to pull back rather quickly. So there's that. I'd still love to see an officer to help with things. Yes, comrade. No, pioneers. Oh, wait, there we go. But he definitely should have two pioneer teams for that. I also think he should drop having an MD4 job here and instead get a bunker to cover this area instead of an MD4 2, which could be helping more useful places. Time to pop over to Moonchild again. Fragmentation, a bombing run ready. Stick close to this wall. Moonchild getting ready for something big in the south. More infantry being reinforced here. Molotovs and other fun things being locked at each other. If he can get that tiger tank up, yeah, he could actually do some serious damage. If he catches the enemy from behind, force him to turn around, then launch an assault here from the front, and then in the middle of all of that, as this is happening, throws a fragmentation bombing around. That could very well be a decisive winning move for Moonchild. If he can get to happen, the current problem again is. The tiger with the engine damage. He's done here to take an awful lot of fire and calling in a fragmentation bombing run. Can't help but feel the timing is not right. They didn't see that one coming. Oh, they didn't see that one coming. Yes, they did not. Because they're too busy running, Heinz. They don't have eyes in the backs of their heads. Either way, though, those guardsmen will not fight again. Oh, another gun is caught wiped out. Very nasty play there with the T-34. Roadkill. And thus, he suffered some rather grave infantry loss. Now he's going for the sniper. I think he should go for more infantry. Or oh, an officer gets the Oberstleutnant on the field. Schnell. Contrast man to flank about, but coming in with the field of fire Tiger and no pendulum mounted machine guns on either Tiger, surprisingly enough. 
quickly might go to make some firepower there. Scharf shoots to the right for Moonchild. And so far we're seeing that Camfrench is actually pretty stubbornly hanging on here, though he is leaving this point rather than Garn again. And that could prove to be an Achilles seal if for some reason Moonchild makes a successful assault him digs in, then he could actually win the match. But again, bunker here, and then he takes this bunker there. That could pretty much lead to a winning move. Of course, Count Frenchy wouldn't be able to dig him up fast enough before he lost everything. And as he was trying to secure either this, then he could also perhaps sneak down the Moonchild and perhaps get to the center point. Either way, Panzer's here ran into a bit of a problem. Count Frenchy forced him out. In combat. And he really should have two pioneers repairing this tiger, otherwise, it's going to take an age and a half. Scout coming ahead rather interesting all of a sudden. Looks like he's popping an assault into the center, or perhaps a counter attack. Not entirely sure. Oh! Oh no! Oh no, he's going to lose eventually the scout car. What unfortunate business, and there we go. 222 out of action. Oh no, another German infantry squad, but that's it. Loss! Losses keep piling up here for Germany. And Sniper in the open rather realizes in a pretty terrible position as he's forced to retreat. Now he's down to two Tiger tanks and very little infantry. Moontar definitely needs to rectify this as soon as possible. Tiger tank getting up in the south. And there we go, conscripts and guards are moving up from behind, anti-tank grenading, hitting the side armor though and failing to penetrate the 80mm armor. There. And MD crew inside here, getting blasted rather viciously. Might want to consider getting out of there, Boris, before the entire thing collapses on your head. But apparently, ooh, looks like he finally made it just in time before all was too late. Come play to the hang on desperately again, leaving this point very unguarded. Very unguarded, though, in response, Moontard isn't actually making any serious moves for it. Again, a quick officer move could for someone do it. No idea why he's placing the MP42 up there like that. Another fragmentation bombing on like this. can't make a run for one of the field guns. And there we go. Target destroyed. Target, he needs to be careful. On the other hand, you can get this one up and flank that field gun. Blitzkrieg, that is Blitzkrieg or something. No, nope, no, nope, get behind it. No, he's leaving the other tiger behind. Enemy forces are securing our territory. No, never mind, maybe. AA half track though needs to get out of there. Field gun getting back in T2. Sniper moving up. Ooh, overdrive and looks like he might just make it out of the range. But he didn't get the field gun. He could Oh! Direct hit here on the Maxim wipes it out. Destroys it. Kills the rest of the crew with shrapnel, I suppose, but still, there's still that field gun. Could have made it behind it, or had the sniper up to clear it out. And if you can get that field gun, you can pretty much rush in both Tiger tanks and wipe out what is left here for Come Frenchy, if he does it. Oh no, don't, oh, don't lose another squad of Grenadiers. And noting here this T-34 veteran team is closing in on veteran T-3. And field gun down. Reinforcing, repairing, regrouping. More field guns on the way. And this move up here running into some serious problems. Not sure what the guards are doing here. Oh, grenading! 
Actually, did a damage, but the Garson team might get killed here by the Tiger. Field gun missed! Oh, if it had hit, that would have been pretty knocked. Boys are definitely taking down here. Are the Tiger going to move in? But again, had he simply went into that field gun earlier, that would not have happened. Because there'd been no field gun. And now this veteran of Flea Mortar is in the line of fire. That's a Tiger tank. But no. Not. Another field gun has arrived, now the Tiger actually needs to pull away, there's got two field guns bearing down upon it, one of them veteran G2. And there we go, retaking that point and actually getting the much closer to Ciro. But neither of Moonchild's Tiger are in a good condition. They definitely need some considerable repairs. Boasted, as usually it would seem. The Grenadiers might want to consider retreating to safer, less bullet ridden pastures. And Conscript's making a run here, but no! Incendiary explosive round stuns them, allowing the sniper to escape. Well played there by Moonchild. Well played. Well played. Small arms fire! Infantry contact! Or well, they might not save the other bastards. But definitely having only one Pioneer Squad for a Tiger is not going to cut it. It's simply too slow, I would say. And again, two squads usually for any armor, but for a Tiger tank you might even consider getting three to sort of get it swiftly back in the fight. Because otherwise we have to risk having it out of the fight for several minutes, which isn't really very good or efficient. And for the only one who actually benefits, it is of course you're the fight for quite some time. And the less the Tigers in the fight against him, you know, the more time he has to put the screws on the rest of the army. Ooh, looks like he's stole an MG42. It is now property of the Soviet state. We have the point. Still no bunker up here. Tsk tsk. And certainly no attempt at the bunker here. Very much tisk tisk. Well done, comrades. Come the point is ours. In fact, he should have just made a move for these two points, you know, not made an assault for the center. I think yes, in that case, in. the problem for Moonchart might be if he loses this, he simply got too caught up in the center and forgot about the flank over here, which again is constantly very exposed no for Confrenti instead, allowing him to be drawn into this pretty much kills him with all the field guns, which is very much sad. Also, this T-34 is very close to Veteran T-3. Nasty, nasty. Just going to speed this up because it rather looks like there might be preparation for a final blow. More mines going up here. T-34 gaining Veteran T-3. Panzer gun with a puncher strike. Immediate loss there suffered. Two mortars up for Moonchild. Looks like he's getting serious for an assault, but still lacking infantry to really pull it off. Hands are going to in a lot of trouble. Tiger moving in. Getting serious fighting threat against it from the And the Vet 3 T-34. After getting blasted, the other Tiger moving in as well, but a bit too late. He should have coordinated better. He should have coordinated better. Field gun here closes down. And there we go. Half track down. Veteran two for the Tiger. But hits a mine. Engine blown. Main gun destroyed. And wiped out. T-34 got the kill, other T-34 moving in, just a storm of mortar rounds over this tiny village. And we bring the field gun very bravely, 
Panzer fast on the G34. The and Grenadiers getting absolutely murdered right down the center. Also in here now, by the way, there's an MD5 truck covering this point. It looks like he might get the Metro 3 field gun. A small miracle. Or something. Or apparently not. Also, Martin been a dear to move the mortar something close to the Jackson for Bart Moore, the village, and another. Oh, he catches the MD crew just as it makes a move, just as he finally pulls it away. Oh, the bad luck there for Moonchild. And again, Bunker. Could have been better. There we go, Maltus moved up, speeding things up again. Being a bit rather bad here. And quickly going up and getting behind the MP42. A lighting a large stack of hay on fire in the process. And what is this? Another Tiger! Can't help but feel it's a bit too late for that now. And there we go, make a move here, but again, too late for that now. Seven more for it. Set now, there's an MP42 here. Guardian is owning up the Grenadier's advance. Things are just turning incredibly south of Moonchild. His attacks are faulting all across. Tiger advancing. Guard squad close to extinction. And there go, being forced from the half track. And looks like a fragmentation bombing run. A last desperate gamble. No, nope, strafing run. Strafing run of all things. And looks like this Tiger's actually close to going down here to that T-34. In particular, the Tiger's currently thing with all the veterans that the T-34 has. It actually does more damage to the Tiger than the Tiger does to it. And there we go. Main gun got wiped out by the T-34. And there we go, Tiger down. And there we go, game over. A loss for Moonchild and the third Panzer gun in the division. Despite Tiger's support, the problem for Moonchild basically came down to the fact that he focused too much. That is, he got, well, basically tunnel vision when he came to the village. He basically began banging his head into a wall, despite him trying to be a bit clever about it. It still ended up to that run, you know, focusing on the flank right here and fortifying it, thus drawing... Mr. Camfrenchy into a fight over here on the two flanks, and he should have had a bunker up here as well. So in that sense, Moonchild made a few, I think, strategic mistakes when it came to actually being on the defensive and where to choose his fight by the mid-game and onwards. So that was rather his problem, and that allowed Camfrenchy basically to focus everything in the sense of everything, and that was a lot what allowed Camfrenchy to win. That is basically, he didn't have to worry about flanks because he largely knew where Moonchild would always come from. That made it a lot easier to defend for Cam Frenchy. Of course, Cam Frenchy should have done a lot more to defend this early on when he had it with a machine gun and some mines. Otherwise, I mean, again, he could have lost this again if Moonchild had a bit more aggressive in that sense. You know, Cam Frenchy also made his own mistakes, but otherwise he did well what he did and made good use of the half check to keep hanging on in the center and merging, of course, so nicely played there as well. In that regard, doing his best, you know, to hold his ground no matter the cost, which made it difficult for Moonchild to actually make any progress, which is also good. So very stubborn defense here, which worked out, but again, also in part due to Moonchild getting into a very stubborn assault without, you know, any sort of trying to spot out any weak points. So lack of Blitzkrieg mentality there for Moonchild. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned a thing or two or three. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends? If you didn't, well, why not subscribe to your own? Provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.